Okay, uh, so yeah, welcome back everyone for the uh, second session here on the introduction of the Book of Acts and I hope uh, you're all enjoying it. We have um, uh, looked at uh, how the work of God uh, was, you know, how it expanded and uh, touched many lives uh, as we see in the Book of Acts. So we have... Um, looked at the overview and uh, covered a, a couple of uh, headings under which you know we have seen uh, all the things that are going on uh, in the book of acts so uh, we stopped at um, uh, uh, the fact that you know this gospel uh, went across to many communities and a powerful work was done and the lord jesus uh, was the main person who was preached by the uh, apostles and uh, uh, also you know some of the teachings that uh, existed during the events of the book of acts now uh, towards the end of our class uh, we said uh, church and revival is is a good um, it's a good theme or topic to uh, describe the book of Acts uh, and uh, one of us posted on the chat a little later saying the same works which the apostles did by the power of the Holy Spirit uh, aren't they happening even now so that's a good comment that's true uh, so the work of the Holy Spirit uh, it is seen in a very powerful way in the book of Acts but you don't see an end to it uh, we are not told that you know those works ended uh, at Acts chapter 28 so there are uh, a, a lot of um, writings and uh, sermons on Acts 29 okay Acts 29 doesn't exist in the Bible but basically what Acts 29 refers to is uh, our lives and the supernatural work of God through the lives of the believers who came after uh, the book of Acts so Acts 29 is the life that we live for God on the earth today, uh, continuing to impact the world uh, for the glory of God. So uh, it's true that God's work continues. So let me uh, uh, go forward from there. And the next uh, uh, subject that I want to discuss about is that the book of Acts uh, is very supernatural. Okay. Uh, in the Gospels, you find the Lord Jesus performing many miracles uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit. That was one individual, okay? that, that Jesus who became fully, he's fully God and fully man, but he was demonstrating the kingdom. And you see the kingdom primarily being demonstrated through the Lord Jesus. But in the book of Acts, you, know, you have apostles, you also have believers right uh, you would notice that people in the church who did not yet have a certain position of influence even through their lives uh, the power of the holy spirit was being revealed examples would be people like stephen okay, stephen was a volunteer in the church at that point in act six uh, seven volunteers are chosen to um, distribute food to the widows stephen is one of them but when you read about Stephen, uh, we are told that he was a man full of faith, but also power. He demonstrated the power of God. So the apostles, the believers, right? And uh, every community that was touched by the gospel and received the gospel, you would see the power of God being demonstrated through them. And the supernatural works of God uh, are seen. So there are lots of uh, miracles, healings that are recorded, lots of deliverances that are recorded in the book of Acts. And uh, in fact, regions are transformed once these miraculous uh, works take place. Uh, you know, particularly uh, in uh, Ephesus, right? Ephesus, you would see that God, God's work took place so powerfully uh, when the power of God was demonstrated. In Philippi, when, when uh, a um, demon-possessed girl, she was set free, people actually, you know, heard the gospel. They took notice. Uh, it got their attention and then the gospel spread. So a lot of supernatural works you would see in the book of Acts. And uh, in another, uh, another way of putting it is that the Holy Spirit was at work. So the book of Acts in many ways, it is the direction of the Holy Spirit. He directs the people. Now we will uh, notice how 
Paul in his missionary journeys, whenever he had to choose a certain place to minister, he would depend on the Holy Spirit. You know, and the Holy Spirit would direct him and guide him and say, "Okay, you know, don't go into this region now, but you go into another region." So you observe the work of the Holy Spirit in leading, empowering, um, and you know, uh, releasing the mighty works of God. through the apostles through the believers in the book of acts so the supernatural power of god uh, is something that we just cannot miss and as we mentioned earlier it continues today we are those people who must carry on these uh, supernatural demonstrations of the power of god now a couple of other things that we see in the book of acts is as the gospel spreads to various communities uh, in acts 15 you know you uh, you read about uh, the jerusalem council okay the jerusalem council where by then uh, you move from just a few leaders in the church to uh, a good number of leaders in the church who are part of the decision making process and uh, uh, there is uh, an issue that comes up where uh, the gentiles are forced to follow jewish traditions right the gentiles who accept christ the jewish believers uh, you know they they some of them insist that even the gentiles will, must follow traditions like circumcision and all of that but the jerusalem council decides that it is not necessary right what is important the important thing is for them to be born again not to follow uh, man's tradition so you also notice in the book of acts that the emphasis is on faith in jesus and to uh, let go of unnecessary jewish traditions the gentiles are told to follow a couple of things that are useful for them but they are not forced to follow traditions right so the emphasis uh, uh, for the communities that are being saved is to have faith in the lord jesus christ and to let go of their uh, wrong way of living okay, if if at all they have uh, some sinful lifestyle so th these are all things that you observe in the book of acts now i want to talk a little bit about the church in the book of acts and to do that i want to share uh, an image with us uh, and it will clarify many things So once again let me share my screen Okay I will share my entire screen then go to that page Okay here you have it and I hope you can see it so the book of acts is the place where you have the church taking birth and when did this happen when do you think the church was birthed in the book of acts anyone you can just take a while guess when was the church birthed Okay, I don't hear anybody. Acts uh, chapter two. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Thomas. I think that's Thomas. So yeah, uh, Thomas, it was birthed in Acts chapter two when the Holy Spirit was poured on the people. So if you can see this uh, image, I like it, uh, and uh, the ref, the place from where I've taken it, uh, you know, that's also mentioned. Um, but I like this. Uh, it, chart here because it talks about the birth and the growth and the expansion of the church so in acts chapter 2 when the holy spirit was uh, poured upon the believers peter preached his first sermon and 3000 people were added to the church so that was the day the church was birthed and then you see them you know sharing all things in common uh, devoting themselves to the apostles teachings breaking bread going from house to house so that's a community it's become a community of believers whom we call as the church 
they uh, uh, begin to give witness to the gospel in Jerusalem. So the church is birthed in Acts chapter 2. Until uh, uh, about Acts chapter 6, right, you, you notice that, you know, the church and what's going on in the church uh, and how the apostles are giving leadership to the church, all that we, we would see. And slowly, you know, what we observe is the church begins to enlarge itself okay, and move out. So you have people from within the Jerusalem church who are being sent out. So I, I already mentioned to you Philip who goes to Samaria uh, and uh, he does the ministry over there. Uh, and then, you know, eventually you, know, you have uh, others, like Acts chapter 13, you have Paul and Barnabas who expand further. The enlarging is happening uh, and then the expansion goes on, touching all those regions that we saw earlier. Uh, another beautiful thing that you notice is that as people step out to new cities, churches are formed in those cities. What is a church? It's a community of believers. So you would read about, um, you know, other churches, church in uh, Ephesus, church in uh, uh, Galatia, a church in Philippi, uh, or uh, uh, another very uh, interesting and um, important church, a sister church that we will learn about is the church of Antioch, where Paul um, ministered in his initial during his uh, initial ministry. So uh, there are many, many churches that rise up. Okay. So when we say that the church is birthed, yes, the Jerusalem church was birthed uh, in the second chapter of Acts. But as you go forward, that church grows and there is the birth of very many local churches. Okay. But all these churches spiritually are you know one body of christ uh, and they have the same uh, vision they have the same mission for the gospel then of course you see the expansion of the church uh, uh, moving into different regions at that time so there are many lives that are changed uh, there are um, uh, several miracles that take place you see the spread and multiplication uh, of the people of god now a couple of other things you observe is that you know the communities that are being touched they also increase in number so it's not just the jews anymore but you know you have the gentiles you have uh, you know different other communities of people who become part of the believers so we will notice Okay, this this uh, this transition the church makes from being that that small uh, uh, you know uh, like if you would say a baby maturing into an adult uh, throughout the book of Acts. Okay. Now, when I say maturing, there are several things. If we look at the church, we can observe you know so many different things. We will see that uh, initially there are a few leaders, then uh, many leaders start coming into the scene. Right, like I told you. By Acts 15, you have the Jerusalem Council. There are so many leaders uh, who, uh, who are able to make a decision. Uh, then, you know, you observe that it's not just the apostles who are preaching and doing the miracles, but also the believers. So believers have become strong uh, in the teachings. Believers have become strong in the work of the Holy Spirit. And they are going ahead and... Uh, serving people and miracles are taking place through them and that's a that's a strong church right the church is really growing up you will see a praying church initially when opposition uh, comes to the apostles uh, you know you find them uh, striving but they come back to the people of god and they say okay you pray right you pray so the people of god are praying and even in acts chapter 12 when uh, peter is in prison You'll find that church is actually uh, in somebody's home meeting to pray and intercede for the release of Peter. So the church is growing in different aspects uh, in, in the structure, in the leadership, uh, in their faith, in the demonstration of the supernatural power of God. Uh, and also, uh, you know, um, I just told you in prayer, right, in prayer, also courage when opposition comes their way. They're no longer afraid. Now, we will read at some point that uh, because of persecution, the church of Jerusalem, right, uh, it, it could not 
continue and keep growing larger but people had to um, move away from jerusalem and what happened when people went to different parts uh, of you know their their uh, uh, region they went ahead and planted churches so when you read about the book of antioch you will observe that uh, uh, you know it's not started by any notable apostle but it is some believers okay who started this this uh, important church so the believers had actually spread across but wherever they were going they were uh, planting churches they were doing the work of the ministry so the church continued to become stronger and stronger and stronger uh, and you see this throughout the book of acts and then as you uh, move towards the last uh, uh, you know chapters you see the missionary work of the church the church is no longer um, only for themselves but they think about impact and they want to move forward to impact new territories uh, and uh, uh, conquer new frontiers for the gospel and this is the journey that the church makes uh, this is the impact that the church has and that is also very interesting to uh see and uh, study in the book of acts now in this um um uh, image that i have put for us uh, there's also uh, another observation you now you find uh, evangelism evangelism uh, which initially is city wide we look at jerusalem a lot of people in jerusalem get saved okay so city wide uh, evangelism is happening and then it spreads it spreads across so it spreads across to that particular region uh, and um, uh, you know national it becomes national for the jews and uh, uh, you know for for their communities but eventually you know you, you would find paul trying to enter into asia trying to enter into uh, new countries so it becomes cross cultural uh, the spread of the gospel moves from being city wide to nation wide to then becoming cross cultural so all these all these things we will observe in the book of acts and uh, it's really a very very fascinating journey for us to make through this book so i have touched upon you know several themes that we will uh study in detail uh in this course now a couple of other things for us uh when we observe the book of acts uh i told you that we will touch on the life of apostle paul now the exact timelines and the exact missionary journeys we will look at it later but i want you to have a glimpse of it right away i was telling you that uh, we will not go into the details uh i was telling you that we will not go into the details of paul's missionary journey but i would like to show you uh, at least um, an image of the places where paul has been um and that will help you see how far and wide uh, he traveled to spread the gospel so the missionary work right that's where the term missionary comes in uh, where you have you know paul going and winning different people for the gospel so i i hope you can see my screen can you see it now yes ma'am yes, ma okay yes, ma great 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 okay wonderful so um uh, if you can just see you know your all these points over here these are all various cities uh, and stops where you know paul went and he spoke to believers who lived in those places right so you just observe so many points so many stops so many um uh, cities across regions so the travels of paul covering different cities and churches so you would uh, observe that uh, he generally he would go initially and preach the messiah to them and uh, give them an invitation to repent and then when people respond to the gospel um a church will be established and uh, in the way that he ministered he would usually uh, strengthen the leaders in that place he would have some leaders uh, and then you know instruct them and whenever he uh, went past 
that region again <coughs> excuse me he would strengthen the believers once again so you read that many times he would go back for example you know if uh, uh, he went to iconium uh, and lystra and uh, darby now if he is going back from darby to iconium he will go to lystra he will go to iconium and again spend time with the believers so strengthening the believers imparting uh, the truth to the believers right uh, and establishing them in the in the things of god in the kingdom of god that was very very important to paul so you see that he had touched uh, so many different cities so you can only imagine uh, how many believers um, were Uh, in all these cities and uh, uh, let's also remember that it was not just paul right who was uh, uh, planting churches at that time there were ordinary believers whose names we do not know in in the book of acts who were also serving the lord so these are the regions that paul touched but we are sure that the work of god which was done had a greater extent than this map that we are seeing and uh, of course you know uh, the work of paul will be covered under the missionary journeys uh, and uh, each missionary journey you know took a couple of years so um, like about 2 years 3 years he would go cover one region come back go cover another region come back and the purpose of each missionary journey also was was um, a unique like to find new territory then uh, later on to just strengthen the existing churches so on and so forth and towards the end of paul's life uh, he was uh, uh, captured he was imprisoned and he had to be taken to rome so you would notice here over here he did his work and then later when he was captured he had to be taken to rome okay rome is at the uh, extreme left of this map and even there when paul was imprisoned you would see that he was preaching the gospel to the people who were uh, taking care of his case right and they uh, got to hear about jesus the messiah and he gave them an opportunity to give their lives to christ so such was the ministry of apostle paul uh, and uh, such was the uh, impact of apostle paul and we will uh, learn more about it in the future so i think uh, now we have a good idea of different things that are going on in the book of acts um, yeah uh, so any any thoughts at this time or any uh, questions before we continue yeah ma'am we i got some idea about falls and how the holy spirit working and spreading mm. the gospel to so many mm. places ma'am yeah. yes yes that's right that's right yeah so from whatever i have shared so far uh what is it about this early church that um you know that really inspires you Ma'am, Holy Spirit, uh, Holy Spirit lead. And, yes. Uh, through Holy Spirit, uh, they obey the Holy Spirit, the 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 commandments and leading, and they they step step out and they work. Yeah. Yes. 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 Thanks, Kiran. Yeah, that's true. You know, the leading of the Holy Spirit and. uh the obedience of the people anything else that stands out for you because we are the, also a church right of of today's uh, day and age so when you observe the early church in comparison to us is there anything that you feel wow we too should have that in us okay dev says dependency on the holy spirit and the work of the spirit that's great manu holy spirit doing work and strengthen the believers true yeah and uh, the believers in acts are obedient okay so obedience is what kiran says yeah what else inspires uh, you know, us yes thomas as you said not only paul and many uh, many people uh, established the church uh, 
Uh, still, you didn't uh, touch that portion. I'm in Antioch, we can see the people, those who persecuted and scattered. The scattered yes. people, wherever went there, they established the church there. Mm -hmm. That's that's mm -hmm. the powerful thing where the believers so strong in that time where they can go and minister to the people. That's that's how the every church should grow in this time. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, definitely, definitely, uh, Thomas. So it was a strong church, strong church. And uh, it's only a strong church which can make an impact. Yeah, so uh, we, we uh, cannot stop but be inspired uh, by the book of Acts and how, um, you know, God was unfolding his plan and purpose initially through the church. Uh, and we must continue in that same kind of fire. We must continue in that same kind of obedience. We must continue in that same kind of dependence on the Holy Spirit. And that's uh, what God wants for uh, each and every one of us. So uh, as we study through the book of Acts, uh, this is the expectation that I want to set for us. You know, we will uh, look at the events, we will look at uh, uh, the incidents that took place uh, and uh, not just looking at it from a historical viewpoint, but uh, we, we can, uh, you know, take lessons from there for ourselves. Know, at this point uh, and really seek the Lord and say, God, you know, uh, can we be those same uh, believers who have the fire of the Holy Spirit and who have such a passion to uh, move to regions where people don't know the gospel and to share the pure gospel, right? I told you the message of the book of Acts is the Messiah. And uh, those who ministered uh, the gospel, they were very clear about what the gospel was. And not only that, they ministered with the power of the Holy Spirit. And as people were healed, as people were delivered, you know, as uh, signs and wonders uh, were performed among communities, there was a great response. There was a great response. And you notice cities, entire cities turning to the Lord. You notice regions turning to the Lord. Uh, and, and that's sort of an impact today. You know, we we uh, do see that to some extent, but our prayer is that uh, we will see so much more of it even as we wait for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so just a couple of things before we wrap up for today. Uh, a little bit more on the timelines. Uh, now, we understood about the missionary journey and the work of Apostle Paul. Now, how does the timeline look in the book of Acts? Uh, I would also encourage us, I will um, uh, maybe put a link, but uh, you can actually study uh, a publication, APC publication uh, called Revivals, Visitations and Moves of God. And in that publication, you know, Pastor has um, uh, mentioned about revival in a very, very systematic way uh, in the Book of Acts. So that will also help you understand the timeline of the Book of Acts better. So I would encourage uh, the main uh, material for us in this semester uh, is the Bible. So if you have an NKJV version, you know, you could uh, uh, read up and come a couple of chapters for every class. So I will go over it like a story uh, and explain to you the different events. Uh, for additional study, you can look at David Guzik, right? David Guzik uh, has elaborate uh, commentaries on books of the Bible, uh, EnduringWord.com. Okay, enduringword.com has a commentary for the book of Acts and primarily we will use that to, to that what I mentioned just now, uh, Pastor Ash's uh, publication on and moves of God. So the timeline which is covered uh, <coughs> Acts chapter 2 
to Acts chapter 8 is um, uh, a span of about eight years. So the first eight years uh, is from Acts 2 to 8. And what did we see there? We saw that the church was born and the church uh, became stronger. Uh, and that was the initial stepping out of the church. Okay. Then from Acts chapter 8 to Acts chapter 13, uh, which is again the next few years of the church, and that again is uh, roughly about um, you know nine nine years or ten years uh, of time. In that time, you see all these sister churches, right? Sister churches, uh, church of, of Samaria. Eventually, you have Antioch, and then Paul comes uh, onto the scene. The gospel is going to the Gentiles. Uh, and then the missionary journey of what's of after Acts 13. So by now, uh, roughly two decades have already gone there. And the last decade, right, from Acts 30 onwards, the last decade uh, till Acts 28. Is where we observe the journeys of Apostle that he goes to cities and uh, he spends very amounts of time in different places like uh, in uh, Tessalon in Corinth he spends 18 months okay uh, in um, Ephesus three years in Ephesus so you'll find him spending different periods of time in different cities and you know uh, with the work of God uh, and towards the Last four years is where we will read. Uh, he's been tried. He uh, does not stop encouraging the churches, uh, and uh, you know he writes uh, his letters to you know we we the epistles are being sent to the churches. That's to read epistles that Paul wrote. There are uh, names of uh, so many co-workers uh, that that you know Paul uh, uh, brings out. So. The impact is on regions, is on people, it's on leaders who are uh, identified, groomed over the years. Uh, and uh, a lot of work actually happens uh, in this, in these 30 years, right, uh, through the church and particularly through the work of Apostle Paul. So uh, this in gist is, uh, uh, all the main things that you need to know about the book of Acts. Uh, and uh, from the next class, we will go chapter by chapter. So next class, I would encourage you to uh, read up Acts chapter 1 uh, and also to read up Acts chapter 2. Okay, Acts chapter 1 and 2. Uh, and uh, if possible, there is an APC publication um, uh, on Holy Spirit baptism. Okay, Holy Spirit baptism. So uh, that is also highly recommended. Uh, you can uh, read that up and then, you know, uh, uh, come for class. And as we study uh, whatever is in those chapters, we will try and relate it to, you know, the content on the Holy Spirit baptism as well. Okay, so uh, once again, at this point, um, uh, I just want to uh, leave this time open to ask you what your expectation is uh, you know, as you study the book of Acts, what is it that, that you want to uh, take back with you at the end of this course? Revival. Revival. Okay. That's great, Kiran. How about the others? What would you like to take with you? Passion. Okay. Manu says passion. Wow, nice words uh, that capture act, passion, revival. I'll use the word expansion. Okay, and Dev says leading the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes. Yes. Want to back?
okay so uh if you haven't thought about it yet i encourage you to think about it okay uh, and uh, please do post it on the stream page of uh, uh, our google meet um, so that we all look forward to certain things uh, that we will receive from this course okay so here is a very very uh, general outline uh, we will delve into the depths of the book of acts uh, from next week onwards okay siddharth here adds he says just get to know more of church and holy spirit and personally for me to be led by the spirit in work or ministry okay wow thanks siddharth thank you for uh, mentioning that yes so uh, we are looking forward to all of these things uh, and uh, i would request someone to please pray as we close today's class and just pray that uh, we will gain all this whatever we talked about and in addition to that you know uh, much more from our course on uh, the book of acts so uh, can i request uh, dev to pray please dev can you lead us in a word of prayer yes and then the father i thank you lord i thank you that you have given us this time that we will learn from the word of jesus that we will see we need to um, learn the works that you did to the early churches lord jesus how you been to all the disciples and all the apostles lord jesus how you how, how you did your work through, through their life lord jesus as we go through this book lord jesus let us understand and let us Uh, relate ourselves, Lord Jesus, so that we can we can not just only learn, Lord, but we can apply it in our life and our in our ministry, Lord Jesus. But whatever we are expecting it from you, Lord Jesus, we do, so that we can uh, have it more than what we are expecting, Lord Jesus. We thank you for Nancy Man, and we thank you, for, thank you that we all can come together and learn, Lord Jesus. We thank you once again, and we bless you, Lord Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Dev. And uh, yes, uh, so take care, class, and we will connect back uh, next week. Please do read up uh, Acts chapter one and two, and also the APC publication, Holy Spirit Baptism. And uh, you know, we will take it from there. God bless. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Bye. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.